There are a lot of Northern California Easter lunch and dinner tables that just became divided. Families split for the war of I-80 that is about to begin. The Kings and the Warriors meeting in the NBA playoffs for the first time ever. The NorCal rivalry is for real and the NBA couldn't be happier. You are listening to Locked on Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Time for another episode of Locked On Kings. Hello and welcome into Locked On Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season long and very soon to be all postseason long. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I'm a Sacramento sports reporter and producer for ABC 10 News, and I am thrilled for the first time in my history as a podcast host, for the first time in the history of the Locked On Kings podcast. We're talking about Kings postseason basketball. We're 82 games in, and we're not done. We're going to at least get four more, probably more than that, and we know the stage is set for Kings and Warriors. Before we get into that, we have to talk about very briefly the Kings and Nuggets game tonight. Before we even talk about that, I want to say, hey, happy Easter, everybody. I didn't know if I was going to be recording a podcast today or not. Since we now know the Kings and Warriors are meeting in the playoffs, I thought it was appropriate to record something short and sweet. Uh, I'm sure you can hear by my voice. I'm once again going through having a kid is wonderful. Having a kid is just the kid getting sick a million times and then you getting sick because the kid is sick a million times. So I'm dealing with a little bit of congestion. That's why I sound raspy as hell. I sound like I've been smoking too much. Uh, either way, let's just say I'm losing my voice already preemptively with the excitement of Kings playoffs here in Sacramento. So happy Easter to everyone. This is going to be a short episode of Locked on Kings, not nearly as as long uh, as it normally is, but I wanted to <clears throat> make sure that I got something recorded and something out there for you. But before we get, talk about Kings and Warriors, right, let's talk about this Kings and Denver Nuggets game. There's only one thing that matters to me from this game today. There's only one thing that matters to me from these last two games. There are two losses. You know, I, I responded to a tweet from Damian Barling, my buddy from ESPN 1320, saying that he knows both of those games didn't really matter in, 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 in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but he's not exactly thrilled with the Kings ending the season and the vibes ending the season on a losing streak. I understand that completely. I get that. I really do. The I felt a little bit of that. I don't necessarily have a response to that. I can just share what I'm taking away from these two games that makes me feel ultimately either positive or overall like it's I'm indifferent about the Kings losing the last two games. Two things that I'm taking away. Number one, De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis are extremely important to the Sacramento Kings offense. Wow, great take, Matt. Really hot take. Great analysis. On to the next one. Really, that's what I listen to Locked on Kings for. No, duh. No, what I mean by that is... Look, we know what Fox and Sabonis bring to the table. We know they're the best players on the Sacramento Kings, two all-stars. Like, what they do offensively, just their numbers alone, right? What they bring to the Sacramento Kings offense, the scoring column, the assist column, rebounds, whatever. Like, of course, that's massive. But look how different the Sacramento Kings team looks, how the rest of the team plays when they're playing <clears throat> with Fox and Sabonis. It's not just how... The two of them set the others up. It's not just how Keegan Murray or Kevin Herter get more open looks because they're running DHOs, dribble handoffs, off of Tamanta Sabonis, or because De'Aaron Fox is drawing so much attention attacking the basket. I'm not just talking about that. Simply sharing the floor with these guys, what they bring to the Sacramento Kings, what they bring to a game, the amount of respect that opposing teams have for them, and the amount of attention that they have to put towards those two players opens up opportunity for everybody else. The rest of the Sacramento Kings feed off of that. So what did I take away from these last two games? Offensively, the Sacramento Kings are a shell of themselves when Fox and Sabonis aren't playing. Not just because they're missing that Fox and Sabonis contribution, because they're missing that presence. And they're not able to play off of the simple uh, fact that those players are on the floor drawing attention away from them or opening up opportunity for them just by being there. Not really even doing anything, just by being there. With Fox as a bonus on the floor, even if the ball isn't in their hands, it opens up far more opportunity for the other three guys that are out there with them. 
I was surprised that the Kings starters played in tonight's game or this afternoon's game. Very surprised. Didn't expect it. I'm glad to some extent we did because we got another reminder of how good this Kings team is and how they're just fine when those team those guys are playing. When the Kings starters were playing, they looked fantastic. Mike Brown saw enough to shut him down and confidently go, okay, we feel good going into the postseason. Then the Kings offense fell apart and they lost to the Denver Nuggets. Okay, the players that are going to play the majority of the minutes against the Golden State Warriors in the opening round of the playoffs looked fantastic. And then you go back to how the Golden State Warriors looked on Friday. This is the only other thing I took away. And we already talked about this. The Golden State Warriors did not look great. They didn't look good against the Sacramento Kings. Now, I'm not naive enough to think, okay, because the Warriors did not play as focused as they're capable of playing as a championship program, uh, a championship franchise organization, because they were playing against the second and third stringers of the Sacramento Kings. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stupid, right? I know the Warriors are going to look in the playoffs better than they looked against the Sacramento Kings on Friday. But again, the Warriors are beatable. And the Sacramento Kings can and absolutely will win at least a game or two against the Golden State Warriors because the Sacramento Kings present a lot of issues that the Warriors, I don't think, are going to be able to handle. I don't think there are a lot of teams in the league, period, that are able to handle what the Sacramento Kings present offensively. I responded to a tweet uh, from our, our Locked On podca- uh, Warriors podcast host, Cyrus, uh, and he he said something that, for the most part, makes sense. He said that the uh, the Golden State Warriors getting to the sixth seed and 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 playing the Sacramento Kings uh, over the the uh, Phoenix Suns, who are the uh, if the Warriors had won the fifth seed, they would have played the Phoenix Suns. He said that's the much easier route. Not really much of a take. I agree. Like yes, absolutely. And I'm putting my hand up here saying it's obvious you would rather play the Sacramento Kings than you would rather play the Phoenix Suns, right? Mike Brown has talked about that. The issue that I have with anybody saying this and believing this is that I just I take a little bit of exception to much easier, right? Because the Kings are not going to be easy for the Warriors or for any team to deal with. That offense is not going to be easy for the Warriors to just knock out. The Warriors are not just guaranteed to punch their ticket to the next round. And when I responded to Cyrus and Cyrus responded to me, what he talked about was mapping out the rest of the the, the playoffs. Like, oh, the second round, third round opponents, because you're the, the, the sixth seed instead of the fifth seed, you'll likely play these teams instead of playing these teams. And your way of matching up with this team, this has to happen. Like, I get it, but I'll tell you this right now. If you're worried or you're thinking going into this playoff series with the Sacramento Kings, if any Warriors fan, talking uh, podcast host, media member, anybody is thinking about the second and third rounds when coming into the first round against the Sacramento Kings, you're in for a massive wake-up call. I, I hope, I hope, now the Golden State Warriors and Steve Kerr are never going to allow this, but I hope the Warriors go into game one thinking about how they're going to win in four games and be rested up for games two and games three. I hope that they come in and undermine the Sacramento Kings and underestimate the Sacramento Kings. I don't think the Kings have any problem being the underdog despite the fact that they are the better seed and home court advantage. They know what they're facing in the defending champion Golden State Warriors. They know the expectation is absolutely that the Kings should lose this series. Now, should is based off of the Warriors' success in the postseasons and they're coming off defending championship and being a dynasty versus the Sacramento Kings just starting, hopefully, a dynasty of their own one day. Like, we get that. The Golden State Warriors have not lost a playoff series. This was pointed out to me on Friday. They have not lost a Western Conference playoff series since 2014. Now, of course, they've missed the playoffs a couple of times, but if uh, in the Steve Kerr era... The Golden State Warriors, every time they're in the playoffs, they've made it through the West and made it to the NBA Finals. That's phenomenal. That's excellent. I don't, I mean, I recognize and and appreciate the history of the Golden State Warriors and what they bring to the table. I'm telling you, one, the Sacramento Kings are more than capable to be the ones to end the Golden State Warriors dynasty as we know it. This Kings team is on the rise. The Warriors, despite coming off a championship season, they're on the decline. That's reality. Like, we know this. The Golden State Warriors are on a decline. Everybody's talking about Draymond leaving or moving on from Klay Thompson. Now, Steph Curry is still Steph Curry, right? There's more than a million reasons to be worried about or afraid of the Golden State Warriors. It's not disrespectful to say that the Warriors are on the decline. It's impossible to continue to be at the level that they were at when they were winning champions with Kevin Durant or when they were the greatest team in regular season history before Kevin Durant even joined, right? The Golden State Warriors are on the decline. The Sacramento Kings are on the incline. I'm telling you. Let the Golden State Warriors come into game one believing that this is going to be way easier and because they finish in the sixth seed and not the five seed, that their route through the playoffs is going to be significantly easier. Let them think that way. 
Let them believe that because the Sacramento Kings are going to open their eyes just like they're going to open the eyes of fans and media and everybody around the NBA. If the Kings offense is capable of playing how the regular season has gone and you can't just throw out the regular season as nothing because the playoffs are suddenly different, like the Sacramento Kings are suddenly going to forget how to play basketball or the Warriors are suddenly going to be an amazing team that doesn't lose on the road even though they only won 10 or 11, I don't know what the final number ended up being, um, road games this season. Like, if you want to disregard the playoffs that bad, you know, it'd be my guess. But the Sacramento Kings are not. They're not going to just forget about how they were successful. Plus, they have a head coach in Mike Brown who spent a long time on the bench in Golden State. And I'm not saying he knows all of Steve Kerr's uh, tricks and everything like that, but he knows how to handle that team. He knows how to beat that team. Nobody should go into this series believing that the Sacramento Kings don't have a great, great chance of winning. They're not the favorites. They shouldn't be the favorites. But it's they're not massive underdogs either. They are underdogs. I don't think they care. It's a position I'm happy and confident with. It's a position they're happy and confident with. It's a position the fans are happy and confident with. And look, I know there are going to be Warrior fans in the Golden 1 Center. Just like I know there are going to be Kings fans in the Chase Center. I'll tell you this. This is fantastic for the NBA. Finally, for the first time ever, Kings and Warriors, not just meeting in the playoffs. For the first time ever, the Sacramento Kings and Golden State Warriors are in the playoffs at the same time. The Northern California regional rivalry has always been fun or like simple. Now there's layers to it. Now there's a playoff series. Now there's going to be some venom. Now there's going to be passion. Now there's going to be fire. There's going to be pressure. Which, by the way, in this series, pressure all on the Golden State Warriors. Not on the Kings. Now, of course, there is King uh, pressure on the Kings to perform. They have their own pressure that they've put on themselves. But the pressure of expectations, that's all on Golden State. You're up, champs. You wanted the Sacramento Kings. You think this is going to be the matchup. You're the you're the juggernaut dynasty taking on this little feel-good story in Sacramento. Pressure's on you to get the job done. And Sacramento's not going to make it easy by any means. I said it before and I'll say it again. There's no way the Sacramento Kings are swept in this series. There's not. They're not going to be swept. And there's a very good chance that when it's said and done, Sacramento Kings are going to be the ones worrying about their round two opponents and their route going forward in the playoffs like apparently the Golden State Warriors are worried about right now. But this is fantastic for the NBA. It's great that this Northern California rivalry is for real now. For real, for real. I think this playoff series is going to be a blast no matter how it turns out. I cannot wait for the fan atmosphere. I cannot wait for the passion, the energy, the volume, the drama. This is everything that you could want, especially from a basketball media member and a podcast host. I'm thrilled. I absolutely cannot wait for this playoff series, and now we have a week build up before it begins. So, what can you expect over the next week? Previews after previews after previews, setting the table, lots of guests from throughout the play-in. Of course, we'll be paying attention to what happens in the play-in, but that doesn't really matter to the Kings at this point. Ultimately, this next week in the build up all the way until next Saturday or this upcoming Saturday, you're going to have just as much preview content as I can come up with here on the Locked on Kings podcast as we get ready for Kings and Warriors inside the Golden 1 Center game one on, I believe, Saturday night. Can't wait for that. So excited for it. Can't wait to have you join me uh, throughout this pl- uh, process, the playoff process, the buildup, and beyond. I appreciate your support so, so much. Before we wrap up here of this very abbreviated version of the Locked on Kings podcast, like I said at the top of the show, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the number one way to play daily fantasy sports. The way it works, you pick two to five players and you pick the over or under on their Prize Picks scoring projection. So for this playoff series, you could take the over on Steph Curry points, the over on De'Aaron Fox points, the under on Draymond Green points. You pick two to five players. If you get them right, you can get 25 times your money on any entry. It's no competing against other people, just you versus the projections available. And they offer projections not just for the NBA, of course, but for MLB, uh, for NFL football during football season, combat sports, so many uh, more entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. They offer safe and fast withdrawals and currently are operational in over 30 states and in Canada. Download the Prize Picks app or go to Prize 
prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, prize picks will give you $100. You deposit $50, prize picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. And today's episode is also brought to you by Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. It's the coolest game that I've played in a long time. I've always thought I could be a great NBA general manager. I'm pretty good at it in NBA 2K. Turns out it's not easy at all. I'm actually struggling, if I'm being completely honest with you. If you've had the same thought and you fantasized about being a general manager and running your own NBA franchise, Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is right is available for you to play right now. The game allows you to manage every strategic aspect of a franchise, playing through seasons and leading your franchise and fans to glory as you build a historic dynasty in the simulation you're responsible for, like dealing in with challenging personalities, players, coaches, etc., hiring the right coaches and assistants, trading and training players, uh, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency, the draft, all the ups and downs of a regular season and the playoffs, all in this challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is completely free and playable offline. You can play on the go as you want and where you want to. Locked on Kings listeners, you'll receive a 100% free boost to your franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure you check it out. To download the game, visit probasketballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up in the app stores. That's probasketballgm.com. Ultimate Basketball GM, start your dynasty today. Appreciate those sponsors. Appreciate all the great coverage uh, or sponsors over the season here. I'm so glad the regular season is over. Can't believe I'm saying that. And it's not from a sarcastic way of saying, thank God we can go into the summer and not have to worry about Kings basketball anymore. Now it gets to an even bigger level. And I can't wait. I have no idea what to expect. All I'm truly expecting at this point is just fun and just enjoyment. Even if the Sacramento Kings lose. This is a stage that we've wanted to be on for a long, long, long time. And I know Sacramento Kings fans and Golden State Warriors fans are going to bring it. So let's get this series started. Hope you'll join me all season long for the buildups to this playoff series and beyond. My name is Matt George. You've been listening to Locked On Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network.